You guys all set? Well, again, great to be out on uh, Cheese Day, and what a perfect way to start on Cheese Day here in Wisconsin at the Center for Dairy Research, where they do fabulous work. And as we mentioned, uh, where we're going to have in the not too distant future a fabulous new facility and remodeling uh, part and expansion of the other. And as part of the overall uh, June being Dairy Month, where you've got an industry that provides over uh, 43, almost 43 and a half billion dollars worth of economic impact in this state. Uh, about 79,000 jobs related to dairy alone, and a big part of that's cheese, and a growing part of that is cheese. And of course, the more that uh, uh, cheese consumption goes up uh, around the world, the better it is not only for our cheese makers here in the state, but for our dairy farmers and everyone else involved in the dairy process. And so we're thrilled to be here today. Thrilled particularly to highlight the grant from the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation uh, to the Turbo Program to help uh, dairy entrepreneurs uh, people with new, exciting, dynamic ideas uh, that can help us lead the dairy industry into the 21st century. So, with that, we'll take questions on that or anything else. Harley Davidson says there's moving some production overseas to get tariffs. What do you do about that? We talked uh, quite a bit about this last week at Select USA with the U.S. Department of Commerce in, in Washington, uh, and not only about Harley, but just in general. Uh, my hope is there's two ways uh, to help deal with this. One is what we talked about with Select USA is get more foreign investment in the United States. And of course, I made the pitch to the some 3,000 people there. Hey, we'd take you, I don't know if we could take all of them, but we'd take as many as we could in Wisconsin, big and small alike. So uh, more investment in America, particularly in states like Wisconsin, certainly helps with that trade imbalance. And then the other part was something that was brought up at the G7 meeting a couple weeks ago. Uh, but the ultimate goal, if we can get there, would be uh, no tariffs or, if, if anything, few tariffs on anything. Um, because uh, it's not just the tariffs the presidents and administrations brought up. It's tariffs for years that many of our trading partners have had or, or things that act like tariffs. If you look in Ontario, for example, the price controls on the dairy industry in Canada has a negative impact on uh, d dairy farmers and the industry here in Wisconsin. So that's one of our best trading partners. We love doing business with Canada. We want to keep doing business with Canada, uh, whether it be in agriculture, manufacturing, or otherwise. Uh, but it would be a lot easier if we could do it on a level playing field. So that's what I'm going to push for is ways that we can get to a level playing field. Uh, then we don't have this tit for tat uh, on any number of products out there. The Supreme Court last week ruled that uh, states can impose uh, online sales taxes. Do you want to do that? And if you do, would you offset it to um, reduce other taxes? In, in the past, and as you guys know, we, we uh, uh, not through a, a anticipation of the court action, but uh, through many years, the Congress has talked about what they call the Main Street uh, Fairness Act. And that was saying that if you do business in the state, whether you do it online or you do it through a fixed uh, site, that the uh, sales tax should be the same one way or the other. Uh, while that was proceeding through the Congress, we put in the budget a few years back a requirement that if a sales tax was generated because of action in Congress, then instead of that money being new money into the state, we would send it back to the taxpayers, figuring it shouldn't be a tax increase. Uh, it should be just leveling the playing field for uh, retailers and other operations in the state. Obviously, this is different. I don't know that we're, we're actually asking our lawyers to look at it, whether or not it invokes that clause in the state budget, or that came out of the state budget. But I think one way or the other, we'd want to get that back uh, to the hardworking taxpayers. How we do that, I think will be part of a larger discussion I'll have later this summer going into the fall about our plans for the next state budget with this money and with other uh, dollars that we think are available to help lower the tax burden on working families. We may look at ways of expanding the child tax credit. Uh, we may look at other things to help seniors. There's a whole bunch of ideas on the table. And so we'll lay this out as part of a comprehensive plan. Governor, do you agree with that? Is it position that we should be able to send the process? Again, that's a federal jurisdiction. Obviously, tariffs, I just talked about, are a federal issue, but they directly impact uh, state uh, the businesses in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, this issue is one, again, I leave up to the uh, we've seen action when folks you cover have talked to their federal representatives. We've seen action in the last week or so. I would anticipate there'll probably be some more changes to that. But again, it's out of my jurisdiction. Other governors, though, Republicans and Democrats have said we're not going to send our troops down to the border. It's kind of policy in place. So why is this a federal state issue? We've got 12 troops down there. It's not. If you buy into the politics of it, uh, you say that if you look at the facts, General Dunbar affirmed again last week 
Uh, our members of the Wisconsin National Guard play no role in law enforcement. That was part of our original agreement. That agreement continues in place right now. Uh, they have no interaction uh, with illegal immigrants, detainees, or people seeking entry into the, to the United States. So a lot of people, for political reasons, are implying that. Um, some people elsewhere may have bought into that, but the bottom line is uh, members of the Wisconsin National Guard are there in a supportive role for the Arizona National Guard, and they don't have any uh, responsibilities in this area. Is Wisconsin receiving any uh, foster care placements of the children of the detained immigrants? I know Michigan's gotten some. I'll have to check. I'm not aware of any. It doesn't mean that there haven't been discussions not internally, but in terms of uh, specific agencies. But. jurisdiction over the other I don't. It's simple. I have jurisdiction over the no I have jurisdiction. I have I have jurisdiction over the National Guard. That's simple. And for us, I've said in the past, uh, prior to all this discussion, I, I think the timing clouds the fact that the, those of you in the media choose to make a connection even though there isn't one. President Obama uh, sent uh, troops to the, uh, to the border. President George Herbert Walker Bush sent troops to the border. Uh, President George W. Bush sent National Guard to the border. Heck, our National Guard, 101 years ago, was entirely on the border of Mexico. In 1917, just months before, uh, they formed the 32nd and became the Red Arrow Brigade that went into World War I. Uh, so that's not unique. In this case, they were there uh, providing support in the past when when you've had three different presidents uh, of each uh, political party send them to the border, it was because of, of issues related to a long, uh, issues related to uh, drug concerns. Those are still concerns on the border right now. The biggest challenge you have, uh, aside from the issue that's forefront in the media right now, is related to trafficking of, of drugs, of firearms, and of people illegally. Last one. This is not the media making this issue up. Other governors have made this issue. Well, again, for us, I, I got my hands full with things here in Wisconsin. That's my point is I, I could comment on every single thing in the federal government. It might be good for the media for stories, uh, but that's not what I'm elected to do. I'm elected to lead the state of Wisconsin and the focus on the things uh, that need to be done here. And again, there are good people at the federal level, uh, including one of the most powerful, the Speaker of the House, who's here in the state of Wisconsin. And people certainly have the opportunity to go and talk to them about federal issues. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys.